Miami. Now check this out. Five minutes to go in the fourth. Okay, nice little finish there. What did you see, Mr. Rose, as this game came down the stretch? Miami got timely stops late. They cut off angles for DeMar DeRozan to get to the bucket. And big block late by Bam against Zach Levine. But my favorite words in basketball right there, and one son. Son. That's not Jimmy Butler. That's Hemi Butler, OK? <laughs> but this guy was clutch all night long. Look at Max Struess. To the max. Came up big when they needed him the most. Made seven big threes, scored over 30. He was huge today. Heat win, 102 points on the board. But now before we get to the winners, what did you take away from the Bulls season, which just wrapped up tonight? I think the Bulls have a lot of soul searching to do. They have to figure out what they're going to do with Vucevic in the paint. If you notice, he wasn't much of a factor um, down the stretch. They hope to get Lonzo Ball healthy. Obviously, if he's healthy, that changes the game. But they really took a big step to me winning their previous playing game. But this game for Miami was all about character, right? You're the team that made it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Correct. You have Jimmy. You have Bam. Bam, they're going to need you in the next series. Yeah. One field goal, that ain't going to get it done. Eric Spolstra on the sideline. How about this? The Miami Heat are the lowest scoring team in the NBA. But when they hold a team under 100 points... They're 12 and 1. Oh, interesting. Well, the Miami Heat, they move on to face the Bucks in a first round series that starts on Sunday. This will be the fourth time that Miami and Milwaukee they face off in the playoffs. And the winner has gone on to the finals the previous three times, including 2013 when the Heat won it all, and 2021 when the Bucks did. So, Mr. Rose, what will the Heat need to do to build off of this win versus the number one overall seed, the Milwaukee Bucks? For Miami, you gotta find offense. You know, Kyle Lowry played well in the previous game, knocking down a lot of threes. He was over there watching late. Unfortunately, they were able to pull it out. I mentioned Bam, who only had one field goal. But one thing that I'm looking for with the Milwaukee Bucks that isn't making headlines, but it's a story for me, Chris Middleton left the, pre the last game that he played in in the regular season with a non-contact knee injury. And he's dealt with injuries the entire season. If he can't be himself, that really puts me in position to pick the Boston Celtics to come out of the conference. And what are you expecting out of Giannis Antetokounmpo? Dominance. <laughs> I'm expecting dominance. Best player, best team, uh, averaging 30, 10, and 5 on 55% field goal shooting. But here's the key for Giannis. Don't settle. You know this, Chanae. So many times as a player, you want to show the world the rest of your skills. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to show you that I can make this three. I'm going to show y'all that I can make these post moves and these turnaround jumpers. If he's going downhill and he decides it's going to be basket, foul, dunk, layup every time, that's going to put a lot of... Clutch teams in the NBA this season make the biggest plays down the stretch. Welcome in. It's Playoff Central Live presented by State Farm here from our World NBA TV headquarters in Atlanta, Lloyd, that makes it sound fancier than it is. Uh, <laughs> Coach Lloyd Pierce, Sam Mitchell right there. I'm Matt Weiner. Good to have you with us. Another fun play-in game. Uh, and Miami, I mentioned in our pregame, led the NBA in clutch wins, and they came up clutch late. Yeah, and to Coach, Coach was right. He talked about that Miami culture, Jimmy Butler, but the guy was Matt Struess in that first half. He gave them confidence. He gave them that lead, and he let Jimmy Butler know that was another viable player on the court because Bam had his hands full with the size. Rebounding, scoring was difficult for him tonight against that size. But Jimmy Butler found that guy, Matt Stoops, early in the game. He got them going, and then second half, Jimmy Butler kind of took over. And, Coach, you said it. I mean, it's something about this Miami Heat team this time of year because you look at the stats, Chicago should have won this basketball game. But come fourth quarter, Miami defense playing through Jimmy Butler. And then Jimmy Butler not just scoring, but finding players at the right time and right moments to knock down big shots. And then again, Chicago did it to themselves. Zach Levine had some untimely turnovers. They had some bad shots. So at the end of the day, Miami does what Miami do. Yeah. When their back's against the corner, <laughs> Pat Riley, Eric Sposa calls out for that culture. And again, it shows up at the at the right time. Chicago shot 40%, <clears throat> turns it over four times in that fourth quarter. 
Coach, what did you uh, think the difference was tonight? Well, I thought the difference was the adjustment. And we saw a Miami team struggle on the uh, glass the other night against Atlanta. Uh, they win the battle tonight, 51-37, led by Bam Adebayo. Uh, he was the main culprit in that game. Mm -hmm. And I thought they made the adjustment. Uh, we knew this game was going to come down to their ability to contain the paint, keep these guys out of the paint. Chicago struggled all night. Where they did have an advantage, they hit a couple threes late in the game. It's 91-91, I believe, in the fourth quarter. But Jimmy Butler steps up. Max Truce had the game. They needed, they needed one player to get going from the three-point line, and Max Truce was that guy tonight. I know we're early in the, uh, the history of the play-in, but the seven threes is a play-in record for Max Truce. Six time in his career, he's hit at least seven threes. And he scored the first 12 points of the game for Miami. You talked about him them. showing he could be a viable option for them offensively after the struggles they had against Atlanta on Tuesday. Yeah, because what it does for the Chicago Bulls, now it sends that mental picture that now it's another guy. You know Tyler Hero can get hot and beat you at any time. So now you still got Tyler Hero in the back of your mind. And here go Struz just knocking him down like he did to start the game. And so now here you are Chicago and you're on your heels and you're like, look, we got to always account for Tyler Hero. Jimmy Butler's going to be Jimmy Butler. But now this other guy is the one torching us right now. And I just think they let the game get away from them. They had an opportunity. They went up in that fourth quarter, I think by five or six at one time. But then they came down, turned the ball over, a couple of bad shots. Mm -hmm. Just not smart with the basketball. Zach Levine wasn't as good as he was in that second half like he was against Toronto. DeMar DeRozan does what DeMar DeRozan do, but at the end of the day, Jimmy Butler. I'm going to go back to him. The Butler did it again. I yep. mean, you watch him. It's like he's on one leg. He's tired. Does he have enough to finish? But he finds a way to make plays. And that's the thing. And so you watch the video. Watch Jimmy Butler. I mean, this guy's amazing to me because he's like an old car. You keep waiting for him to break down. But look at that. He just finds them open spots right there. He slips in. Back door for left. Here's Jimmy Butler again. Playing like a de facto center. He's setting the screen, slipping to the basket, and again, finishing over the bigs in the paint. Doing what Jimmy does. Here's Jimmy with the ball this time. Watch him use this double screen as he fakes the screen, turns it down. Euro steps through the paint for left. And again, Chicago, you got to make him use the screen. You got three defenders over there. Again, and I don't understand this. Me and Coach was talking about this, and he said Caruso, because he's in the league right now, is a tough, tough defender. But at the end of the day, Coach, I hear the heart may be willing, the mind may be there, but the size, you're just too little, Caruso. And here's Jimmy Butler again. Just using that size and strength to get downhill against Zach Levine right there. Pump fakes and gets him off. And that right there was just a tough shot. Taking the punishment from Vucevic, still dropping him off with the left hand, Coach. Some of you were showing my son <laughs> a few hours ago. But again, it, it, look, we all know about this culture. We all know how tough Miami is. And, and I guess the way they practice their training camp, that mentality, always holding guys' feet to the fire to be accountable. That's when it shows up late in the game in tough situations in a play-in. And the emphasis on fitness and conditioning that they've had there for decades under Pat Riley. You know, Billy Donovan's no doubt, no doubt is going to be asked about rotation and personnel choices late in the game. Kobe White hit some big threes. It was tied, I think, at 91. He comes out. Patrick Beverly comes in, hadn't hit a shot at that point, and is not guarding one of their go-to players offensively. And I'm curious, from a coach's point of view, I know you can't get into his head, but what, what might he have been thinking? Well, I think we all understand both of these teams are top five defensive teams right. throughout the course of the year, and you're going to hang your hat on the defensive end. And so you get into a, a winner-go-home type of game, and you're, you're going with your strength. And your strength for the Chicago Bulls has been their defense all year. Pat Bev has been one of their leaders on the defensive end. Uh, but I think tonight was different. T 